Welcome everybody to Mole Rat Nation. I'm Bob Carmichael and let's get started. How I finally found a supplement that raised my nitric oxide levels. Three months ago, I made a video about my attempt to raise nitric oxide levels using Neo 40. To test my results, I used a nitric oxide indicator strip that changes color depending upon the amount of sodium nitrite in my saliva. Here is a short clip from that video. So what do experts recommend to bring our nitric oxide up to youthful levels? Eat more leafy green vegetables and beets that contain high levels of nitrates every day. Be sure to get moderate amounts of exercise at least three times a week for at least 20 minutes. Stop using antiseptic mouthwashes that kill the bacteria that help convert nitrates to nitrites in your mouth. And this also includes not overdosing on antibiotics for the same reason. Stop taking antacids and other heartburn medications that lower stomach acid levels. Stomach acid is needed to make nitric oxide. And take nitric oxide supplements that provide the necessary nitrates for good health. I'm not satisfied with the results I got from taking Neo 40. I plan on taking the Sanotize product to see if that would help. And I plan to do some experiments with sodium nitrite and potassium nitrate. If I find something that does a better job than Neo 40, I will do another video and add it to the playlist at the end of this video. Over the next month, I began to look for sodium nitrite supplements that I could take to try to raise my nitric oxide levels. Much to my surprise, I found articles like this one. People were using sodium nitrite to kill themselves. It turns out it only takes about a teaspoon of sodium nitrite. I had no idea that using sodium nitrite could be this dangerous. So at that point, I stopped trying to do something on my own and looked into other areas to raise my nitric oxide levels. One of the things I did was to switch from calcium alpha ketoglutarate to arginine alpha ketoglutarate. Dr. Bryan mentioned that this was a waste of time if my nitric oxide synthase levels were too low, but I thought I'd give it a try anyway. Another thing that I was doing wrong was using a fluoride toothpaste that killed the bacteria in the back of my mouth that convert nitrates to nitrites. I started using David's toothpaste and Ricewell toothpaste because they use hydroxyapatite instead of fluoride to protect your teeth. This is a very popular form of toothpaste in Japan. They both tasted good, and although it took a little getting used to, seemed to do a very good job on my teeth. I did notice that they are way more expensive, especially the Ricewell toothpaste. I began to change my diet to include green leafy vegetables like arugula and celery, and occasionally beets. I continued to check my results with the test strips I used to test Neo 40. Nothing changed. I purchased a nitric oxide spray that was intended to be used to protect against COVID-19 infection and began to use it on a regular twice daily basis. Still nothing. I noticed no change in how I felt. The test strips did not change color. Then one morning I watched a video where Dr. Brian talked about a new product he had developed called NO2U. The big ingredient in this product was sodium nitrite. When I looked on the bottle to find out how many milligrams of sodium nitrite this product contains, it didn't stay. It said it was a proprietary blend of magnesium, vitamin C, and sodium nitrite. When I subtracted 164 milligrams of vitamin C and 12.8 milligrams of magnesium, I got 176.8 milligrams total. When I subtract that number from 220 milligrams, which was listed as the total amount of proprietary blend, I get 43.2 milligrams of sodium nitrate for each lozenge I took. So two lozenges a day would give me 86.4 milligrams of sodium nitrite a day. In his most recent book, Functional Nitric Oxide Nutrition, he talks about studies where people were given 80 milligrams to 320 milligrams of sodium nitrite that resulted in substantially lowering blood pressure with no toxic side effects. 
and only occasionally did a few people become nauseous or have a headache. So with a daily dose of 86.4 milligrams of sodium nitrite in his new lozenge, I felt like this was a safe level of sodium nitrite to test. The first three weeks of taking two lozenges a day ended without any problems. No nausea, no headaches, and no light-headed feeling. On day 23, right after I'd had a large meal at a restaurant, I began to feel very faint, like I was about to pass out. I was so nervous about what was happening that I had my wife drive me home from the restaurant. By the time I got back to the house, the dizziness was gone, but my heart rate was very low and I was shaky. The next day after lunch, the same thing happened. So I decided to quit taking the lozenges and the episodes of dizziness stopped. I did not know it at the time, but there is a condition called postprandial hypotension, where your blood pressure normally drops after a big meal. I've never had this happen to me before, and my blood pressure has always been normal. So I'm guessing that was what I was experiencing. So I guess I would have to say that for the first time, nitric oxide supplements worked. I did not have more energy, if anything less energy. And I certainly didn't notice any so-called Viagra effect, in fact, just the opposite. I suppose this is a good tool for people with high blood pressure, but it did not make me feel any better or healthier, and I did not notice any increase in energy. So I guess this was a success and that I finally got nitric oxide levels to go up, but I sure didn't see any benefits that I was hoping for. If you haven't seen the first video I did about nitric oxide, I will give you a link at the end of this video. And join the nation. Click on the mole rat on the right to subscribe to this channel. I have no financial ties with any of the products mentioned in this video. And thanks for watching.